Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode I am going to attempt to adapt the Nick Capable to launch satellites and possibly do a lunar flyby mission but also maybe build some new rockets. Now in order to do that I have time warped to complete uh, basic solids, the research that we were doing. That was a time warp of 9 days. And so we've got procedural SRBs here but I noticed that the entry cost is 50,000. I had already put the little uh, decouplers here, getting ready to slap some SRBs on uh, when I noticed that. So I'm going to have to think a little bit strategically about this because we only have 328,000. And I don't know what the cost benefit of using the SRBs is because I don't know how much, you know, for instance, uh, compared to the AJ-10s that I had before as boosters, uh, which would be cheaper. I mean, the AJ-10s, after all, only had a cost of 150. And let's not talk about the Airbees, which were only 10. So how much do the SRBs cost, and are they worth it? That is an interesting question. Now, I can build a new rocket. I know we're a little bit tired of the Nick Capables and all. I mean, the Nicks and the Capables, at least. Not necessarily the Nick Capables, since we've only launched it twice. Uh, but we've got the LR-105s. We've got these possibilities here. All very good. These two from the Atlas. Uh, this from the Titan. So yeah, there, there are possibilities for us. And each of these has a lower entry cost than the SRBs. But of course, the SRBs have a longer range implication to them. So that's our situation. We could also unlock this, which is the upper stage of the R7 rocket. And that has a very interestingly high ISP in vacuum. So that could that that will revolutionize our rockets, I'm sure. Uh, definitely, I mean, uh, when it comes to it, the Vanguard isn't an upper stage rocket. Uh, where are you, Vanguard? At the tail end of things, but it does have double the thrust, so uh, we'll we'll have to see. Actually, triple the thrust. Come to think of it, but it doesn't have the ISP. So, yep, lots to think about and uh, rockets to build so let me let me take a look because I'm a little bit nervous about unlocking all these let me see what my contracts can give me in recompense so right now our active contracts are just the automatically generated one crude altitude record of 180 and then a crude speed record of 1500 meters per second technically we could do this with our existing rocket the lofty but that might be pushing its capabilities and risking the Kerbal. Now we've got Science Day from Space Around Earth. We could do that right now, actually. Um, yeah, I, I guess I, I should do that and uh, transmit using our existing orbiting vehicle, I guess we call it, or probe. We'll call it probe. I don't know about these sounding rockets. Um, suborbital space flight pilot well that's definitely doable I mean that's exactly what we've already done why are we getting that again huh okay well uh, but it's only duration 90 days hmm well we can complete uh, two or three lofties in that time we can only take a max of three contracts uh, successful re-entry is much more interesting but uh, you can see these contracts uh, until we get to the lunar ones the others aren't very lucrative we really have to go to the moon to make up the funds that we lose by unlocking those engines yeah well I guess that's the plan uh, let, let me hold off on the suborbital spaceflight one since uh, yeah, we could do it easily, but we've already done it. Let me just quickly pop out and uh, complete this contract by transmitting some data using our probe. Well, we've got no connection right now, and that brings up a point. Certainly, the lunar missions are going to need better communication. But right now, it's close to its apoapsis. That's why it doesn't have communication. So let's go around. And now we've got communication. Let's see if there's something we can do out here that we haven't done before. Uh, no. Cancel. Just above Earth's water. I don't think it is just above anything. I don't want to give just null data, but 
we might do that. So yeah, just a reminder, we do have persistent rotation. See, it's persistently rotating. You know, we've got another Nick capable in storage. It's possible we could just launch it into a polar orbit. Uh, I think we've already done everything with grasslands. We just don't have too many biomes around with Earth. Okay. Uh, can we fulfill the contract with this? And um, yep. Yeah, okay. Well, if they're satisfied, I'm satisfied. Let's get on to building a rocket. Okay. So I've decided to bite the bullet and unlock the procedural SRBs after all. And uh, I have discovered a disturbing fact, and that's that the SRBs are the bringers of disturbing lag spikes in the VAB. Um, uh, for instance, uh, let me right click, okay, there's a little bit of lag there and I increased the length and you can see the Kerbals have stopped moving and yeah, and that's just increasing it by one meter. So yeah, okay, and also I have to worry about my avionics now because now it's a heavier rocket. It's not giving me the punch I want, we'll see. Anyway, lots of tweaking, and it looks like every time I tweak it, it's going to want to pause for a bit. Okay, well, here we go. Okay, well, now I regret my decision to unlock the SRBs. Um, I've widened the NIC capable a bit because we needed to fit the guidance unit 2 meters, and so... Uh, it was widened to two meters and so everything else got wider as well uh, otherwise the engine configuration down the center stack is still the same uh, one XASR here, four here and then the Vanguard here and then the RD-103 down there uh, but the RD-103 is burning for longer because we now have SRVs to give us a high thrust to weight ratio in the beginning so it gets a boost so a larger RD-103 tank now the problem is, uh, take a look at our cost. Uh, the Nick Cable One was uh, around three thousand funds. This is eighteen thousand funds. Each one of these boosters, uh, which take a long time to uh, pop up with their information, it says cost dry three twenty three, wet three twenty three here, which is curious. When I remove them. Well, then we get the the expected cost of a Nick Capable one. So I don't know what their cost dry, cost wet 323 is. They sure aren't 323. They're really frustrating to work with because, as you can see, it's they, they just lag all over the place. Um, so I don't know. Uh, it's not the nose cones. That's the only part of it that uh, wouldn't be... See, that it's not the nose cones that are causing the cost. It is the SRBs. Their costs, I don't know what this cost is, but that's sure not reflected here. Um, and at 18000 it's really not worth it. It's just no good. Uh, they're contributing about 1,000 meters. Well, let's see. Let's take them off again and see. We've got 12,621, which is... Uh, with this thrust-to-weight ratio, it might be enough to get to the moon on a flyby. And I've shortened the upper stage so it is a pure uh, translunar injection stage. It's got 3,384 there. But uh, yeah, let me take these off. And yeah, it's about 1,200 meters per second that they add. And of course, they add a lot of TWR to it. So that's a plus. But yeah, uh, I can't afford an 18,000 fun launch like that. I think we can do better with other engines. And so this is looking very sad. I'm very sad right now that I unlocked the SRBs and that they are so expensive. Okay, well, uh, let me... Let's see. Um, I think this is a good engine to work with. This, the upper stage of the R7. And it's cheap anyway. Yeah, and it, uh, here it's cheap too. I think that should replace the stage with four XASRs. That would make sense. 
Um, otherwise, the trick is that the RD-103 has a lot more thrust than this uh, LR-105 sustainer. This still has better ISP than the RD-103. Got a good gimbal range. So I guess the LR89 might be a thing. Or how about the 79? The 79 has uh, better thrust, way better thrust. Actually, it's overdoing it on the thrust. Uh, yeah, it's overdoing it on the thrust. Uh, better ISP overall, though. Probably more expensive. Yeah. Let's get this one first. I think it's about the right idea. I hope. Okay, at 800, how does it compare? Okay, it's actually cheaper than the RD-103, so that's a good plus. Alright, so basically I'll... Yeah, totally new rocket, I think. Uh, well, I think I'll keep the Vanguard stage intact. Replace the base stage and replace this stage. Okay, I'll come back to you when I've done that. Alright, so what I've ended up building is a completely different rocket. Uh, so I've called it the Swift 1 and let's take it from the top down. Of course Explorer Probe and Antennae because this is destined for the moon we'll need the extra range and oops, and you'll note that the the stage here is only 36 seconds and that's because combined with the little booster rockets that keep its spin stabilized that's actually enough to go to the moon we might need a little bit more than that I guess it wouldn't hurt to put a, li a little bit of buffer maybe I mean you can see it changes dramatically with just a little bit of change in burn time maybe that's just two seconds and we've already added quite a lot of Delta V well, we can keep it to that. That's fine. So I'm gonna tuck that back in. Okay, and so the fairings are there. And then here is the guidance unit. And so I've uh, deleted the Able Delta Avionics package. And I've just went with this guidance unit early two meters here. And that's because the engine that I've put here instead of the four XASRs is a single RD-0105 and that's more expensive of course than the four XASRs. The XASRs are much cheaper but this is much more efficient. Now you'll know it, it's a big engine a little bit oversized could do with a little bit of trimming but uh, it fits well with the gas unit so I moved the gas unit up. The It used to be that the gas unit was over here and then we had the Able Delta controlling this stage now the guidance unit will control all the way, uh, all the way through and uh, combined the guidance unit here was 0.35 plus 0.14 so uh, that was I mean of course we dumped this earlier so it's tough to assess exactly what the balance is but this is fine uh, now I've got the burn time for this at five minutes and I'm absolutely sure that the burn time for the RD0105 is longer than that so it can handle this and more uh, but I decided I didn't want to go any lower on the thrust to weight ratio so I've kept it to five minutes for that sake okay I think uh, now you'll note we still have attitude jets and that's even though the RD0105 uh, has gimbling and that's because the RD0105 will be out by the time we need to turn to our maneuver node and fire the top stage so we'll need the attitude jets to point us to the maneuver node we've also got the the Ullage rockets on the outside here and that is because I couldn't attach them to the bottom so they're tilted out like that and that's just how it's gonna be okay after that we have the standard vanguard stage I couldn't get rid of it I tried but it turns out it's necessary so yeah but I reduced how many of these 
baby sergeants are on there. I put six instead of eight. Now at the bottom we have, as as advertised, uh, LR89 series booster, and but we also have two two side boosters here, two strap-on boosters, RD103s, burning ethanol, and that is because I couldn't quite get enough sea level thrust out of the center stack. It was at 1.17, which is not great, and also I wanted extra delta V. Uh, these don't give a huge amount of extra delta V, and they cost a lot. The center stack costs 2,900 funds. So adding these two boosters adds about, uh, let's say, uh, 900 to 1,000 funds each. So that's expensive, but uh, it does boost our sea level thrust to enormous proportions. And that I consider to be positive in this case. Uh, we'll see. Maybe I'm overdoing it. Uh, the other options are to unlock, uh, for instance, this sustainer and then create more of an atlas sort of thing, or unlock the LR79 and get its high thrust on the center stack. Maybe I misjudged the fact that, of course, yeah, maybe I just need the high thrust of that. Could add SRBs, but those are insanely expensive for some reason. So that's why I'm not doing that. I thought they were supposed to be cheaper than the LRBs, but well, maybe there's some glitch, something has gone wrong in the matrix. All right. Now, I've got a few questions. First of all, this doesn't have the you know, the little section with test flight reliability and all that. So I'm assuming that it is also not test flight configured. But I will want to test that. We're going to do, uh, this is an expensive rocket, I want to do some static fires first, not with this. We'll have a static fire engine test stand, especially for the LR89. So let me get that together, and then we'll test this rocket out properly. Okay, so here we have our engine test stand, and the downside is that we are going to have to take 18 days to build such a simple thing. Uh, it's just got a gas unit. I wonder if the gas unit takes a lot of time, but uh, it's outside of the range of the Able Delta AV9 package, so we need the gas unit anyway. Yep. Uh, well, uh, it's only a one minute burn. I think. I don't know how much time we need to burn for in order to get the data we need to improve the engine reliability, but anyway, let's let's build one of these. Okay, and uh, just in case, I want to build one with the RD0105. And let's remove all tanks. I, I just want a one minute burn. Now this, this takes a lot less time to build. That's nice. And it's a lot smaller too. Let's have it for two minutes. Look at how much less fuel it takes. Of course, it has much less thrust as well. Okay. So that'll be RD0105. Alright. Probably that doesn't have any test flight thing going anyway, but just in case. Okay, so let's go on to the tests. Okay, so here we are with the LRE9, throttle is up. Let's see, uh, oh, that's the wrong arrow. It says not tracking any vessels. Let's see what happens when I light this. No, uh, even though it seems to have a test flight reliability section, doesn't seem like test flight is interested in it at all. That's a shame, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think it should be, but I don't understand how these things work, really. So I guess I'll just have to deal with it. I don't know what's conflicting with what to cause this not to be read by test flight. If somebody else knows, please feel free to tell me. Anyway, we will complete... Well, let's, let's shut it down. We can save the fuel. Okay. Alright, let's recover vessel. 
Okay, well, we got a thousand funds back from that. Uh, I assume that's about the cost of it. Uh, so, well, let me get the rocket building. I guess we'll try and launch that. Uh, we have the other test pending, but uh, we'll get the rocket building while we are waiting. Okay, so we've got a swift one cooking, but I haven't picked up the contract yet. We will find out whether the swift one works first, and only after that pick up the contract. Because considering its build time of about, uh, I think it's more like 30 days once we move it up to the first slot, the contract doesn't have too much leeway in terms of time. Well, I'm just going to make this a uh, nighttime engine test. No point delaying. Okay, here we are. Thrall is up. Let us check test flight. Oh, still not tracking any vessels. Ignition. Yep. Oh well. Okay. Alright, I am satisfied. Let's recover. I will build another Swift 1, and if we need to make changes, we'll just bring it back in for editing at that point. But uh, no point uh, leaving the second build slot empty. Okay, here we go, rolling out the Swift 1 for the first time. Takes 8 hours. Boy, it's gonna take forever to roll out the larger rockets. And so the goal here is gonna be science, really. Um, we're not going to be getting any funds because we haven't picked up the contract yet. We gotta get science and we're also going to see where the rocket works. Okay, uh, it's nighttime. I don't want to launch in nighttime. I'm gonna work the next morning. Alright, well, there it is. 85 ton rocket. SAS on. Thrall is up. All systems seem nominal. Okay, let's try this. It's got some TWR, so it's gonna be going pretty quickly. Booster separation is the first question mark. I haven't put any separatrons. So is it safe? It may actually be going through max Q right when the boosters separate too. We've already passed the speed of sound. There's a pretty high tension rocket. Actually the G-forces shouldn't get very high at any given time. But uh, at this point, it's got a lot of dynamic pressure. Okay, booster set. Okay, well, it looks like they fell away clean. Well, I think they bumped into each other, but that's fine for us. Well, we went through the region of heating quite well, actually. I thought we would heat up and maybe something would explode like these these little uh, thruster ports on the outside, but no problems there. Okay, I'm gonna leave it right there, I think. I don't know, our apoaps is going up pretty quickly. We had a very steep ascent because I was worried about the heating. Looks like that's not so much of an issue as I thought it might be. Okay, switching to SAS. Set. Okay, the Vanguard is lit. We can probably just go flat now. Maybe a little bit more than that. I have to remember that the next stage is five minutes long. So probably want about two and a half minutes left. Of 
Okay, fairing set. Very good. Well, we're gonna end up high for a change. Alright, well, looking good so far, but we've got another new engine next. And this staging is wrong. Okay. Well, set. And ignition. Whoa, okay. Very good. Now, I haven't actually lined up with the moon at all. In fact, we're probably in the worst possible situation. Yeah, pretty much. That doesn't mean that we can't... Oh, I can't target the moon either. I have to upgrade the tracking station for that. I don't remember what the phase angle between Earth and Moon is supposed to be. Doesn't look like this engine gimbals in a way that really helps orient us. I mean, in terms of uh, heading. It's got pitch down, not heading. Maybe... Oh, okay, it's just Smart ASS. Oh, uh... Hold on. Yeah, it's just Smart ASS not properly controlling it, darn it. Smart SS decides sometimes not to bother with stuff. Because it's like that, I guess. We're gonna be pretty tight when it comes to getting to orbit. I'm gonna have to see. I'm not entirely sure we've got quite in. I mean, it is total trajectory because uh, we definitely have enough delta V. Uh, my trajectory might have been a little bit bad, though. Okay, we are flat. I'm just gonna let it burn out. Okay, we've got enough. Alright, yep, we had enough for orbit. Now we have 3,300 meters per second left. And, um. Can we do it like this? I, I Yeah, I don't think that's an option. I assume MechJeb can't plot for me either. I, I don't see, uh. That option here anyway. Well, let me just manually calculate the phase angle. I don't know. This has got to be tough. This part's going to be tough. Okay, well, I get 114.57 for the phase angle, which is interesting, but not very useful when we are totally not in the same plane as the moon and really need to make an off-plane transfer. Yeah. Now, if we take a look at where we are likely to be, this is our orbit right here, where we are likely to have our ascending and descending nodes, there's no way we can burn out from here, and that's pretty far off too. And ultimately, I don't know how much to burn in those cases anyway. So let's just make a mock Hohmann transfer. Ooh, uh, we're losing electric charge a lot faster. Oh, because we still have that stage connected to us. We need to dump this guidance unit quickly. Otherwise, we're going to lose power. Anyway, uh, let's reacquire. Okay. Uh, let me get the extra antennae active. Boost our range a bit. Trouble is, we're going to lose connection. We'll have to wait until Australia. But, let's just go ahead. We're going to get some altitude records. We're going to be able to 
do some Valen Allen radiation belt readings, that sort of thing. I think uh, that's all I really want to do here. And then we'll try to do a better job of it lining up properly with the moon and all that uh, next time with this rocket. At least we got to orbit. Hey, with a new rocket, that's not always a given thing. Uh, first launch, managed to get to orbit. Very good. Um, so, while we have connection, uh, click prograde and turn on the RCS. Uh oh. Uh, I forgot to uh, configure these. I keep forgetting to configure the RCS ports to nitrous oxide. Okay. Well, we're not going to be able to point prograde. Hmm. Well, I mean, eventually do we flop around to it? Let's see. Without the guidance unit, we have a lot of electric charge. We have like 10 days worth or something like that. Well, heck, let's just go and see what happens. Okay, um, uh, set. Okay, we're spin stabilized in a relative. Oh, shoot, I didn't have throttle up. And it doesn't look like it's gonna forgive me for that this time. Okay, well, not what I wanted to do. Nope. But. It's it's a start. It certainly has enough delta v to transfer to the moon. Let's let's go back to the space center and see about that tracking station. Okay, so upgrades. Come on. I've right clicked on it. Hmm. Okay, well I'm not getting the dialog here. get that one. Uh, let me just restart. Okay, just restarted fresh and now I can click on it. Alright, orbits visible in map. Hmm, I don't know if that's worth 60,000. Yeah, I need a little bit more than that. Uh, oh, no, no, that's, that's, that's without the upgrade, sorry. Patched conics visible in map. Now that, that is helpful. Then we'll know when we get the encounter and we can shut down the engine, hopefully. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I will have to ponder that. Now, I remember, tracking station upgrade requir required for flight planning. So I think it's a combination of upgrading mission control and upgrading the tracking station to really help us. I don't know if I should jump on that. We do have a rocket that is capable of going to the moon. So it could pay for itself. I mean, we could get the contracts and this could be worth it. But we're it's a little bit tight. I'll I'll think about that and make a judgment. Oh, but these will take some time, won't they? These upgrades probably will take some time due to Kerbal construction time. Oh boy. Okay, well, heck. Alright, uh, patch conics, fine. I hope I'm not gonna back myself up against the wall or something. I don't know if, uh, when it says tracking station upgrade required for flight planning, I don't know if this is the upgrade that it's. Oh, wait. Oh, uh, right, it's probably queued up. Upgrades. No, not that. Um, uh, is it under tech? Okay. Oh, no, no. It says here. Sorry. I wasn't looking properly. It says right here, 158 days. Okay. And I guess I'll upgrade that. Facility upgrade requested. Okay. Well, we've got some things queued. We've hit our budget a bit. And now, one thing I need an answer to is, is anyone else having that problem with the SRBs that they cost quite a lot? Is that just how they are, or do I have a problem? That's something I want to know. But uh, other than that, we'll be aiming for the moon, and I'll pick up the contract in the next episode, I guess. 
Uh, yeah, maybe I'll try launching this Swift without the the upgrades, but maybe I'll wait. I'll decide that in the next episode, okay? But we did a successful test of a new launch system, and it looks like it is ready to go for the moon. So uh, with that in mind, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.